next plugin we'll look at is called WordPress SEO by Yoast or just WordPress SEO. This plugin is created by this guy, Yoast Divac, who is considered to be one of the top experts on SEO in WordPress. He has been working with WordPress SEO since 2008 and his plugin is pretty much the benchmark standard for WordPress SEO. The reason why I didn't want to show you this plugin first is because it introduces a whole new level of complexity. So let's install WordPress SEO by Yoast into our current site. First, I'm going to uninstall all-in-one SEO because I don't want two plugins doing the same thing at the same time. And this is always a good plan if you ever install a plugin. Make sure you don't have conflicting plugins at the same time because that can cause problems. So I'm going to go into plugins, install plugins, find all-in-one SEO and just click on deactivate. I'm going to deactivate it. I'm not going to delete it. Now I can click on add new. And here I'm going to search for WordPress SEO. And this takes me straight to WordPress SEO by Yoast. I'm going to click install now. Yes, I want to install it. The plugin gets downloaded into my site, installed. And now I'm going to activate it. Once active, the plugin appears at the very bottom of my main menu here. It just has this icon and SEO. And as you can see, it has way more settings than the all-in-one SEO pack did. Now that we know the plugin has been activated properly and is working, I can see it in the menu item. I'm ready to move forward with this new plugin. As I said in the introduction to this course, WordPress SEO by Yoast takes what all-in-one SEO pack does and adds more advanced functionality to it. That means you have more power, but that power also means more settings to configure. Just like all-in-one SEO pack, the default settings in WordPress SEO by Yoast are pretty good. But to get the full use of this plugin, you need to do some configuration. To make this easier, the plugin comes with an introductory tour that takes you through each of the settings and explains briefly what they're for and how they work. The plugin also has detailed descriptions of each individual function to explain to you how they work and why you want to use them. I'm just going to show you the highlights of the plugin so you know what's necessary to configure right off the bat. The first thing you see here is the big red flag at the top. It says you do not have your post name in the URL of your post and it's highly recommended to do that. This goes back to the something I mentioned earlier in the course that you can set custom permalinks for your site. By default, when you navigate to a single post in your site, you will see that the URL to that post is a question, P meaning posts, and then equals. Let's see what I mean. So if I click through to this post here, you have the post URL. You have P equals, and then number four. And the number is the post ID for this post. And while that makes perfect sense for a computer, it's terrible URL for humans because it means nothing. What you want to do here is use the rewrite function within WordPress to rewrite the URL into something human readable, or as they call it, pretty. WordPress SEO by Yoast has noticed that you haven't set this setting yet or noticed that I didn't do it, and therefore is asking me to fix it. I can choose to ignore this, but that's not a good idea. So instead, I'm going to click fix it. This takes me straight to the permalink settings, which are also found under settings and permalinks. And from here, I can configure my permalinks. The recommended setting here is post name. So just click post name and click save changes. So now you'll see if I go back and reload my page, the link has changed from question mark P equals four to what's the difference between front end and back end development. So this is the actual title of the post rather than that cryptic database reference. Now that my permalinks are set, I can go back to SEO and go through the rest of the settings. So let's look at the highlights here. First off, if you make changes to this plugin and you start feeling like you've done too much and you can't quite figure out how to get it back to the way it was, simply go to dashboard and then click on reset default settings and you reset the plugin back to where it was when you started. That way, you'll get rid of all of your configurations and you can start with a clean slate. Below that, you have tracking, which is a tracking option that allows Yoast to see what you're doing so you can improve the plugin. You can toggle it on and off at will. 
you also have security, which allows you to toggle on and off the advanced settings in the plugin. And I actually recommend turning that off so you don't have the advanced options in your posts because the advanced options are generally something you don't want to mess with. And on the bottom here, you have Webmaster Tools. These are the same features that you found in All-in-One SEO, except that in place of Pinterest, you have Alexa Verification ID. So if you used All-in-One SEO to add your Google Webmaster Tools and your Bing Webmaster Tools verification settings, you need to redo it here so that your site is still verified. And like I said previously, if you have another plugin that's already doing this, don't do it in two places. Only have this verification code in one place, otherwise it gets really confusing. I'm going to skip titles and meta for another video and instead let's take a look at social and this is something that's really cool. In addition to your regular SEO settings which generally target search engines, you can use WordPress SEO by Yoast to hook your site directly to the main social media websites, Facebook, Twitter and Google+. And this allows you to highly customize your content specifically for those individual social media sites for increased sharing. This is actually really important to configure so that you can see what's going on and so that the services know that the site and the service belong together. Under Facebook, you should leave add open graph data checked so that there's open graph metadata on your site. And then you need to add your Facebook admin to your website so that Facebook knows that your admin account is the manager of this site. You can also use a Facebook app if you have a Facebook app. And once you've done this, you need to put in the URL for your Facebook page here so that the Facebook page is directly associated with your site. And once you've done that, you can add your front page settings. That is an image URL and a description for the front page of your site. You can also use a Facebook app if you have a Facebook app. And once you've done this, you need to put in the URL for your Facebook page here so that the Facebook page is directly associated with your site. And once you've done that, you can add your front page settings that is an image URL and a description for the front page of your site to be displayed when your content is shared specifically on Facebook and at the bottom, you can add a default image. This default image will be displayed whenever someone shares a post or a page that doesn't have an image in it. Under the Twitter tab, you can add Twitter card metadata to the header of your site, meaning if you check this, and then add your Twitter handle, your Twitter handle will appear in the metadata of your site so that Twitter will know that this site belongs to you. Likewise, under Google+, you can add Google+, specific post metadata, and you can also set a Google Publisher page, so that would be your Google+, page for your business. When you link these together, Google will know that whenever something is posted on your blog, it's related to the Google+, page. It's a very advanced feature and if configured correctly, it's very powerful in getting more people to your site. Next, you have the XML sitemaps. Now, you may have heard about XML sitemaps before, and you may even have a specific plugin installed just to handle XML sitemaps. But if you use WordPress SEO by Yoast, you should let WordPress SEO by Yoast manage your XML sitemaps. The gist of it is a sitemap is a file, an XML file that tells search engines exactly what's going on on your site, where all the pages are, where all the posts are, and how they relate to each other. So instead of search engine having to go through your entire site and basically look at every single page and every single post, it provides a search engine with a list and says, here's the list, just follow this. When you use the XML sitemap, you can choose whether you want to just ping Google or if you also want to ping Yahoo and ask. Now keep in mind that Google and Bing are the only ones that really matter. Yahoo is now managed by Bing and ask.com only targets sites that have a question and answer type content, which is why they're unchecked by default. But if you think you need to, you can also check Ping, Yahoo and pingask.com to ping these extra services. Under XML sitemaps, you can also choose to exclude certain post types. So for example, if you have additional custom post types that you don't want indexed, you can exclude them under here. So checked means excluded and you can also exclude taxonomies. So if you have a taxonomy or a custom taxonomy that you don't want indexed, you can do the same too. The next setting is the permalink setting. The permalink settings allows you to further customize the permalinks on your site. To show what I mean, let's take a look at our post again. So here we see the post and it's posted under 
category WordPress developers. And when I click on that link, I get to the category archive page for this particular category. And as you can see in the URL, it says category, and then it says the name in the category. The first option here strips that category away so that it would just say the website URL and then WordPress developers instead of category. There are also other important settings including redirecting all attachment URLs to the parent post URL. This is important if you have multiple images or other types of attachment content in your post and you don't want people to be able to land on the specific display of just that image or just that attachment. Internal links is a feature that used to be a separate plugin. Yoast used to have a plugin called Yoast Breadcrumbs that was very popular and it added breadcrumbs to your posts. If I go to a single post, a breadcrumb would be a list of things at the top of the post that would start with a home and then it would have a slash and then it would say the category I'm currently in and then a slash and then the name of the post. That way when people land on a post, they can easily navigate backwards in a category tree back to a place higher up in the hierarchy. To use this feature though, you have to know a little bit of WordPress development. This is not something that gets added automatically into your theme because you don't know where you want it. So this has to be added manually. If you want to do that, you can go to this link here. Or if you're a developer, you simply add this piece of code into your theme file where you want the breadcrumbs to appear and they'll appear. Next is the RSS setting. The RSS feed allows you to add content either before or after each post in the feed. And you can see by default there is the post and then the link to the post appears and the link to the blog which is automatically appended at the end of your RSS feed. This is very valuable because more and more people are consuming blog content in RSS readers and when you put this in, then they'll actually have a link back to your original site and here you can be quite creative and add exactly the type of information you want. Next is the import and export. We already covered import and export previously. This is where you would import content from existing SEO plugins into your WordPress SEO by Yoast. And this is also where you can export your SEO settings. So if you're moving your site to a new site and you want to export those settings, or if you're developing on a local environment and you want to export the settings to a live server, you can do so using this feature. Below this setting, you have the bulk editor feature. The bulk editor setting is a really nice feature that lets you bulk edit your posts and pages when you click into the bulk title editor section. It shows what the actual title of the page or post is, the URL slug for the post and the existing Yoast SEO title for the page or post. Then you have a new field that allows you to update this with a newer, cleaner and SEO friendly title tag. This is a much faster way to update your posts and pages instead of going through them one by one, which could take you a long time. The second to last option we have is the edit files. This allows you to edit the actual plugin files and it's not recommended to ever do that. So simply do not touch it. As you can see, the settings for WordPress SEO by Yoast are quite advanced and they're exhaustive. You need to go through each of these settings in turn and look at each setting, figure out whether or not it applies to your site and try to see how you can set your site up to function the best for your specific usage scenario. This is something that you should take in small doses. So pick one page, go through it, make sure everything is fine, leave it for later, come back the next day or maybe a couple of days later and do another page. That way you'll get to configure everything without feeling like you're being completely overwhelmed with information. And always remember for each individual function, Yoast has added full explanation of why you may want to do this or why you may not want to do it. And also what each individual function does.